All right, what's up? So this is a really good fight here that will be kind of buried on the cards, but it's going to be a really entertaining competitive fight, in my opinion. It's uh, Timor Valia versus Julio Arce. Julio is coming off a 15-month layoff. He's also bringing in a three-and-a-half-inch reach advantage here and a one-inch height advantage. Uh, Julio, uh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, Timor. Uh, a bit unknown, had a bit of hype behind him, and then got stopped by, uh, what's his name, uh, Trevin Jones. You know, he was dominating that fight pretty much. Uh, got stopped, just ran into a, maybe got complacent, uh, ran into, I think it was a overhand left or overhand right. And can't remember what stance Trevin was in, but it was, uh, it was just one big punch, caught him cold, uh, and then finished him. Maybe the stoppage was a little bit early, but, uh, I'm still pretty high on the guy. I think he's a pretty decent fighter and a prospect. Uh, so he is coming off his first KO loss. He trains with, uh, I think, Mark Henry now, I believe, uh, which is a pretty good camp for smaller fighters. You know, they have uh, Frank Yeager, of course. Uh, Zabit trains there. Um, who else? I think Marlon Moraes used to train there. So, you know, they got a lot of you know, high-level, smaller, like, lower-weight class fighters there. So I think it's a really good camp that he's uh, he's picked out here. Uh, and we'll get straight into the striking with these two. Uh, so for Timor, he, um, you know, he's, he sets up a lot of his kicks. Uh, he's doing a lot of pot-shotting. Even with his legs, he's, you know, doing a bit of pot-shotting, uh, just kind of fainting or, you know, slapping uh, a low leg kick and then really digging in with the second one. Um, he'll also set up a leg kick, uh, with just a jab or a jab feint. Uh, so yeah, leg kicks, big part of his offense. Uh, so Julio Arce, he's a southpaw, I believe, um, Timor, uh, will come in with the inside leg kick in this matchup. Uh, so yeah, that will be open. You know, Julio Arce very heavy on that lead leg. He's a, he's a boxer. He does, um, he does a pretty good job at not... Um, not getting his leg kicked out too much, even though he is obviously, yeah, pretty heavy on the lead leg. Uh, all the, all, uh, also for Timor, he'll, um, he'll, uh, throw that body kick versus southpaws, so that will be open in this matchup. Uh, more, uh, for Arce, he's more of a boxer. Uh, everything's following the jab. He pretty much sets up everything, uh, after his lead hand, he'll either go for that lead like right hook or you know the lead uh just jab uh and pretty much he's looking to land that straight left so he'll go through the one two to close distance once he's in distance he'll look for some uh some right hooks uh even even a uh, left hook at times uh but he yeah he does a pretty good job at closing distance uh because that's obviously where he wants to get the fight golden gloves boxer i believe uh earlier in his career or in his life uh maybe as yeah as a youngin but um yeah he looks to close distance uh with the double jab as well uh and land that uh, straight left which is pretty much his money maker what he um hurts a lot of people with uh and the thing uh with Timor is that his hand drops after he throws his jab so uh, he'll be dropping that, um, that lead hand, so his left hand. Uh, so after he throws a jab, maybe, uh, Julio comes in with a one-two. Uh, and once Julio closes distance, he seems to stay around in the pocket for a little bit, try to land some hooks. Uh, so Timor's definitely going to be, uh, concerned, well, just vigilant or cautious about that. Uh, because that's definitely what Julio will be looking for in this one. Uh, both these guys are pretty well versed on the ground. Uh, for Julio Arce, he'll like mostly look to take the back. Uh, so if your opponent turtles or, uh, you know, um, he normally gets in that back body lock, uh, tries a few mat returns uh, once they turtle or, you know, get on all fours, uh, he'll look to take the back. Once he's got the back, he'll um, lock in a body triangle just to secure the position uh, and just kind of control from there. Like, his opponents don't generally get out of that body triangle. Uh, for 
uh, what's his name? Valiev, Timor. Uh, he'll, his takedowns, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't go for them very often. Also, I don't rate his takedowns that highly. Like, he goes for, like, some low percentage take, uh, takedowns. Like, he'll go for head and arm throws or, um, you know, uh, lifting up a single leg and just driving. Uh, but, yeah, like, he, he can get the fight to the ground. He'll, um, mostly look control, like, for control when he's in top position. He's not looking for too much ground and pound or, uh, you know, all that, or subs or anything. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, he's mostly just looking for control. Uh, when he does that, he'll get one hook in. Uh, he'll lean onto them once they're pushed up against the fence. Uh, and he'll look to land some ground and pound with his free arm. Uh, so yeah, you see a lot of Dagestanis do that, like Khabib and stuff. Uh, so I think he trains with Khabib pretty regularly. Um, but yeah, it's just a similar thing they all do. Alright, how these guys win is, uh, Julio Arce, he's very well rounded. Well rounded. Uh, he's got good takedown defense, good one-two, covers a lot of distance with a one-two. Uh, has a you know a fair bit of power, mo- mostly speed. Like he's got pretty quick hands. Uh, and yeah, even in the clinch, like he can get pretty creative. Uh, start going for some some interesting techniques. Uh, but yeah, he does mix up the game a little bit in the clinch. Uh, but on the feet, mostly yeah, he's just using those boxing combinations. Uh, for Timor, he's got, you know, really good dexterity in his, like, his hips. Like, he flicks those kicks up like it's nothing. Uh, especially the lead leg offense, which, um, you know, catches people by surprise because it's obviously not as far of a distance that your leg has to travel or your body has to travel. Uh, and, you know, a po- like, you know, when you're sparring, not a lot of people are going to have, uh, like, lead leg offense that often. Like, you just, it's not something you worry about. So, it's just a different look uh, when his opponents do get in there with him. Uh, also, he um he faints a lot, which is really good. I like that. Uh, and <clears throat> they're really good faints too. They're not just, you know, for the sake of fainting. He's he's fainting just to make reads. He's uh he's fainting to the left. Uh, fainting, like, he'll double, he'll double up on faints. Like, um, it's, you yeah, obviously, he's a very seasoned striker. Uh, and he's also switching up the stance a fair bit, switching up the um, switching up the footwork, just trying to give his opponent different looks. Uh, so he'll give like many different looks over the uh, over the course of a fight, uh, and he can you know he can do that at a decent pace. He uh, he has good cardio. I have seen him slow down, but that was I think in a more heavy grappling pace, grappling type fight. Uh, so he can slow down in high pace like competitive fights, but. Uh, when it was all one-way traffic, like his fight versus Trevin Smith, or Trevin Jones, yeah, I think so, uh, Trevin Jones, like, I don't think he was going to, f- uh, tire in that matchup. Uh, so we'll, we'll go with, uh, Julio Arce again. Uh, so how he loses, so, like, how he manages to lose fights, uh, so his kicks are slow, they can get countered, like, uh, I definitely... I definitely think he's um, better with his hands and his feet. Uh, but yeah, you have seen his kicks get countered a fair bit. Uh, overhand lefts, overhand rights, you know, that's obviously something uh, Timor will be looking at. His kicks get caught quite frequently. I uh, can't remember which fight it was, but someone was just catching his kicks, like, like willy-nilly. Like, how you going? Like, uh, but yeah, so it's a, a guy that's like so seasoned as a kickboxer and like so fast as Timor, I think he'll definitely be catching a few of those kicks. Uh, also with Julio, he can get behind on volume. Uh, he will take the back foot sometimes uh, and look for counters. Uh, big counters. Like he was, he was, you know, falling behind on volume. He was landing a bit of shots, but he was falling behind on volume versus uh, Julio Rosa, who is an awkward fighter to fight. Uh, but someone you should definitely beat uh, at, um, you know, if you're in the top 30 um, in the featherweight division. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so for Timor Valiev, the way he loses, 
Uh, so he can get taken down after throwing like flashy techniques like a flying knee or a question mark kick or, you know, just going to the well too many times with like, say, a high kick. Uh, he can get caught, taken down, uh, just like, you know, an opponent isolates one of his legs and drives him to the fence. Um, so yeah, sometimes he, he's got a nice switch kick, like it's fast, but uh, sometimes he won't set it up, he'll just throw it random, and unless you're like laser quick like Marlon Marais, um, that switch kick's probably going to get caught, or, you know, the opponent's just going to read it. Uh, just when you don't set it up, with like a jab, you know, jab, retreat, like get your distance again, and then throw the uh, switch kick, but like, once your opponent's just standing in front of you and uh, he's got a high guard or whatever, like it's it's not going to be hard to defend that switch kick. Uh, also, something with his style, like he throws a lot of flashy techniques, a lot of um, a lot of energy or high energy exerted techniques. Uh, so he can you know fade a bit, like in the third uh, third round in like you know fights where it's competitive and he it's not just one way traffic. Uh, so it's not very energy efficient style, but um, hasn't really burnt him too much yet. He hasn't really lost a fight due to cardio, uh, but it could come in the future. Uh, so pass the victory for these guys. Now for Timor, like, you know, uh, Arce is going to be pretty heavy on that lead leg, so uh, definitely throw a few leg kicks in there. Uh, get some good volume with the body kicks, because um, it will be open in that southpaw, southpaw versus orthodox stance. Uh, push a pace in the first round, like Julio, it's not the fastest start, he likes to kind of get settled in and uh, fight at his own pace, so, you know, push a pace at the start, and that's what he did against Trevin Jones, so I wouldn't be surprised if he came out all guns blazing, even though he just came off uh, his first career KO loss uh, in this one. Uh, so if, if um what's his name, uh, Julio does throw, you know, I don't necessarily recommend taking him down, because, you know, he's very good off his back. He's, I think he's a BJJ black belt uh, for Arce. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking him down, even just being in top position or whatever. Uh, I'd just, just just counter his kicks with um, with harder kicks, because you definitely have the, the more snap on your kicking techniques, or just, um, you know, a rip to the body. Just, uh, just something, just to counter those kicks, because you've got to punish him for that. Uh, which Dowadu was doing really well in their fight, because, yeah, the kicks are just slow. You just got to, you know, just punish him for that. Uh, for Julio Arce, uh, so, you know, he's obviously going to be moving a lot, as is his style. Uh, so you got to double jab just to get, just to close the distance, and then once you're in there, land the hard two, uh, look for the hooks after that, because he does leave his hands low in the pocket. Uh, if he is getting too wild, don't hesitate to go for a, you know, a reactive double leg, try and get some top control. Uh, so, and if the stand-up isn't going your way, like, say, if he's just too quick, you you notice he has a speed advantage and uh, a lot of his punches are just, or a lot of his techniques are just too quick and uh, you never know where the next one's coming from, uh, just try and take it to the ground. You always have that in your back pocket. Um, so, yeah. Also... Because he's going to be throwing a lot of these crazy techniques. Uh, look to catch one of his kicks or one of his flying knees and just try and take him to the ground. Uh, definitely mix things up, you know, so he isn't just making too many, like, he isn't, he isn't making multiple reads and just executing them without uh, too much resistance from your behalf because you're not, you know, mixing anything up. So, yeah, good idea to mix things up here. Uh, so, in conclusion... Uh, so, in conclusion, yeah, uh, I see it being a very competitive fight, probably more competitive than the odds makers are putting it as right now, uh, but I think I think I see uh, Timor edging it just on volume, just on hustle, like uh, Arce, he seems to get behind the volume at times, he doesn't notice it and the, the, the fight uh, tends to slip away from him, so, you know, I think he lacks a bit of hustle there in that half, in that behalf, when he's, you know, gets going to decision, uh, so, like, um, Julio could definitely hurt him with the 1-2, uh, especially when Team Wars, you know, closing the distance, say, 
to land one of his leg kicks because he, you know, he's obviously a reach disadvantage here. Uh, so he will be in and out of range. Uh, so when he does close the distance, definitely look to land that one too. Uh, maybe just the straight two. Like he, um, yeah, he does have a nice counter two when he doesn't um, use the jab to set it up. Uh, so, but I think, yeah, that's just not going to be enough and he's just going to fall back on the volume. Uh, both have a wrestling fret, but, um, you know, if Arce gets on top, um, I don't think Timor is much of a threat on bottom. Whereas if Timor gets on top, Arce, you know, he's pretty versed on his back. He's pretty, he's pretty active. He'll, um, he knows what he's doing off his back. Uh, so I think at the end of the day, the judges will fa like favor Timor's movement, flashiness, uh, feints, you know, over Arce. He's probably going to be on the back foot. Uh, he's probably not going to be landing as much volume. He'll be landing the more, you know, fundamental strikes. Uh, but they won't be getting any reactions or whatever out of the crowd. Uh, so yeah, I think that's just going to convince the judges to give uh, Timor the nod. Uh, and I think it does go to decision. I think Timor gets it done. So yeah, uh, the prediction is Timor by decision. Let's look at the betting lines. Let's fix that. Okay. Uh, so right now he's sitting at around one dollar sixty. Uh, so that's around you know, um, I think it's around sixty one, sixty two percent. Uh, chance he'll win um, this fight. So, in my opinion, it's probably around 55 45. Like, you know, Arce has been around for a long time. He's always in competitive fights. Uh, he's he, he's definitely not a walkover, but I just think Timor will edge the decision. So, yeah, in my opinion, Timor probably too high. Uh, Arce probably definitely value at one, uh, 240, uh, but. Yeah, it's it's hard because he, he doesn't he, he can fall behind the volume and he um he doesn't hustle and he's he's not one punch knockout power kind of guy. Uh like he does have a bit of power but not, you know. I I just see yeah, Timor just racking up the volume in round one and um Arce never catching up. So yeah, but I would I wouldn't bet Timor at that price. But the only bet I could recommend would probably be Arce at one dollar Sorry, two dollars forty-five or plus one forty-five uh, for you American guys. Uh, so yeah, we'll get on to the next fight.